so so historically back in ancient times like a year ago since i <laughs> since i started since i since i started kind of consulting independently across the lithium industry i was i was kind of more focused on brines because fundamentally in a brine the lithium is already in solution whereas in, in a pegmatitic hard rock you actually conventionally have to calcine the spodumene at a thousand degrees celsius first mm -hmm. in order to get the lithium out to get it in solution Right. So mm -hmm. there's a thermodynamic barrier that needs to be overcome. But but my work has evolved to looking at how do we decarbonize mining of spodumene as well. Right. And and the reason why is because a, a heck of a lot of spodumene mines will be built for, for a variety of reasons that are geopol geopolitical and, and environmental and, and cost based. And and then so so I I I've realized, you know, it's also super important that we decarbonize spodumene mining because it's going to happen. Right. Like mm -hmm. I, I accept reality. Right. And, and I want to meet and I want to meet reality. Right. And, 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 and do whatever I can to help people decarbonize their processes and their minds and understand mm -hmm. the options and the trade offs, because that that is also critical. So so I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's like either or I would say that I would say that all all different types of natural resources are being developed to make lithium chemicals. And, um, and we should decarbonize all of them. So when you were discussing the hard rock, you said you said that it had to be heated up so that it frees the lithium. Now, this also is similar to geothermal brines, right? Where you need the higher temperatures so that the lithium is easier to be extracted from what I understand. Uh, can you, yeah, I'm just vaguely asking about geothermal brines. Yeah. So, so, so I would say those are kind of the, the, the heat in both cases has fundamentally different functions. So, so if you're using a calcination and a roasting to liberate lithium from a spodumene concentrate. You're doing that because that is literally the the quantity and type of energy that needs to be put into the kind of material system in order to liberate the lithium. In a in a geothermal brine context, and just to kind of you know at a high level kind of explain, these these are brines that are taken from between three to ten thousand feet deep, and they're they're typically between kind of 50 to 150 degrees Celsius after heat is taken out to produce electricity using relatively mature technology developed in, in California and, and, and around the world. So the Sultan Sea has a geothermal brine field just south of the Sultan Sea. There are actually north of the Sultan Sea too. There are geothermal energy plants all over the place. And, and what those plants are doing is they're taking brine, so salty water from between six and 8,000 feet deep and potentially a bit lower in some cases. And they're producing the brine, high pressure and high temperature. They're flashing off steam. So the, when you reduce the pressure, steam comes off of the brine and that steam can be used to produce electricity. And then after that brine with, with all the salt in it has produced steam, which produces electricity, it, it's, it's mineralized, right? It's salty and it, it's relatively relatively salty compared to other brands, actually. That, that brine actually does have lithium in it. And it has it has zinc and manganese and, and iron and silica and a whole bunch of other things too. But there are currently a number of real commercial projects focused on trying to get the lithium out of that brine in the Sultan Sea right now. And I, I think at least one of them will probably succeed. I'm not going to name names, but I think one, at least one of them will succeed. So, so that that's a really interesting concept because you, first of all, you're producing low carbon power simultaneously as you produce lithium chemicals, right? So, so that's that's attractive in the sense of you know the energy transition that we're undergoing right now. And but it's also attractive because the, the footprint is so small, like the physical footprint on the surface of the earth, right? Like you have like a, you have a chemical plant with with a with a basically a stream of brine flowing through it. You use a direct lithium extraction technology, which is which is the use of a kind of engineered material to selectively remove lithium from the brine and then leave everything else. And then you're putting it back underground. Everything mm -hmm. that's not lithium, you put back underground. That is the concept. And now, you don't add many materials to it or chemicals? Or? In, in some cases, you do need to modify the brine a bit. And I won't go into details exa of exactly what you need to do, in, but but there are there are some components of the brine that can cause issues for some technologies and that's that's not a that's not a rule right it, it is a trend i would say but 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 based on my observations the brine chemistry modification is is probably needed in in most cases so so yeah so that's the idea behind geothermal lithium i think it's a really interesting idea you know it's interesting to note though that like a, a geothermal like there is literally no geothermal lithium on the market today it doesn't exist yet mm -hmm. right so this is really? this is a this is a mid to mid to high TRL you know technology readiness level what is, um, okay technology approach okay 
So, so um, is it because it was a new technology approach or why wasn't this available before? So two reasons. So first of all, a, a number of new technologies have been developed and, and really improved significantly over the last five to 10 years, which, which enable geothermal lithium in some cases. That's, that's the first part. But then the second part is that we just didn't need the lithium, right? You know, but before the... Before the, the lithium ion battery kind of story, right? Lithium was used to make, to make glass and, and lube and, you know, kind of, I don't want to, I don't want to be mean to glass and lube, but they were just, they were not just small, a ton of things. Yeah. They were, it was a small, it was a very small industry, right? We, we didn't need 3 million tons per year of lithium carbonate. We only needed, you know, a hundred thousand tons per year. So, so, so this is, this is kind of like a textbook economic geology transition. So I'm going to try to visualize this graph. I don't know if you can add it later or something, but like uh -huh. on the X axis, you have lithium concentration in a resource. And on the Y axis, you have quantity of lithium stored in a resource at that concentration. You know, like I was saying earlier, most of the lithium in the world, a lot of lithium in the world is in the ocean, right? And so there's a ton of lithium in the ocean. So at a really low concentration, there's a huge amount of lithium. And then only, only at a couple in, in, in a couple little instances, like the Slard Atacama in Chile and, and some other Slars and the Green Bushes mine in, in Australia, you have really ultra high grade resources that are kind of freaks of nature, right? Okay. And, you know, where do you think the humans kind of started extracting lithium? <laughs> For right? sure. Obviously, they tried to, they, they identified where are the freaks of nature, right? The highest lithium concentration resources, because it's easiest to get the lithium out of them. It's cheapest too, right? So, mm -hmm. so what happens though, when you increase demand is, yeah, you've, you've tapped all the high lithium concentration resources, right? So you've got to start going down the axis. And I don't know if this is materializing correctly on the screen. But for, like, for, you, for those watching the YouTube video, uh, you can see him <laughs> <laughs> doing the graph. So as, as you go, as you, as you need to produce more and more lithium and, and you, kind of, you, you kind of tap out and, and cannot produce any more lithium from you know, the, the freaks of nature, you have to start developing lower grade lithium resources. Right. So, so geothermal you know, brine has less less lithium concentration than uh, these other places, but we're starting to do it. So so does the grade for geothermal brines is it is it a significantly lower or why are we extracting it now and will this be one of the faster growing resources? The reason that I'm asking this is I have a ton of young engineers that are probably looking to start a startup eventually like or join startups. Where should they be looking to to jump in on the supply chain. Yeah. I think geothermal tackles these two things by producing energy and lithium. So, so that's really great. Yeah. Yeah. So, so first, so, so, so three part answer. So first of all, three part um, question. if, if any of your listeners, three part question for three part answer. If any of your listeners or viewers want to learn more about the space, there's a ton of free information on my website that they can access and, and, and learn from and play around with. There's, there's a heck of a lot there to kind of That'll get you started on understanding the lithium industry. Cool. And, 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 and if, if they are particularly kind of energetic and, and, and have some interesting questions or ideas, you know, please feel free to reach out. It's super easy to reach me on, on Twitter and, um, and LinkedIn and email and, and different avenues. And so, so yeah, if, if you have any, anything interesting that you want to share, you know, feel free to reach out and, um, if you're looking for a job or thinking about a startup idea or whatever it may be, I I'm all ears and, uh, and I'm here to help because, because again, I, you know, I, I believe in young people and I, I believe that young people have a lot to bring to, to the space. So that's the first thing I would say. Second thing I would say is to answer your, your kind of technical question about brine resources. So are geothermal brines low grade? Yes. Compared to kind of conventional historically developed brine. So, you know, like the Salar de Atacama in Northern Chile has, you know, Probably the wells that are pumping brine as we speak are pulling something like 1,500 to 2,000 ppm parts per million of lithium brine. That's very high. That is exceptional. And I, it, I'm pretty sure that's the highest lithium grade brine on the planet, at large scale at least. And so, so, so let's call that 2,000 ppm. There's, there's been a lot of development activity. And, and by development activity, I mean commercial projects, like people are actually trying to build you know, mines and chemical plants. There's been a lot of commercial activity on Argentine brines, kind of on the other side of the Andes. And a lot of those brines have concentrations in the range of 300 to 800 ppm. So mm -hmm. we've, we've already gone from 2000 ppm, 1500 ppm to about half to a third of that in Argentina. Yeah. Um, okay. And some of those projects, some of those projects use 
uh, DLE technologies, or one of them does, uh, uses a DLE technology in their process. It's kind of like a hybrid DLE technology that also kind of leverages evaporation. And, 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 and other new projects will use DLE technologies because they're just lower grade resources. And the evaporation in Argentina is, is typically less than in Chile. Chile. The Atacama Desert is the driest place in the world. And so, so evaporative lithium brine processing doesn't work as well in Argentina. It, 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 still, it still works. And some projects will be highly successful using evaporative techniques, but it's it's not as robust and, and as reliable as it is in Chile. It rains more in Argentina. So so that's your second question. And then and then to answer your third question, which is like, where should people be looking for jobs and, and looking to have impact in the lithium industry or the battery metal industry? Or or really, you know, I, I would I would I would propose to, to think about kind of all of industry, right? Because mm. some of the some of the decarbonization problems that are related to technology in chemical processing are, 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 are just the chemical processing issues, not necessarily lithium processing issues. And I think a good example is it's high grade heat, right? So if I need a thousand degrees Celsius in processing of something, right, whether it's a kiln and I'm roasting a rock or sediment or whatever, historically that was met using fossil fuels, right? And, and today, it is met using fossil fuels. And in the future, it, it will still be met largely using methane, right? And, and other, other hydrocarbons. I think one of the really significant technological priorities of decarbonizing industry, whether that's chemical manufacturing or mining or, or kind of these sectors that, that I spend most of my time in is, is heat, electrifying heat specifically. We need to find a way to take in, you know, high voltage, DC power and convert it to a thousand degrees Celsius air, right? Okay. And 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 make that make that that heat transfer work well and, and solve a number of problems associated with electrifying heat. 